Hey, guess what, everybody? I'm in a video game. It's on the Android and iOS app stores. It's basically kind of like Candy Crush or Bejeweled or whatever, but it's got all my little dudes in it. And there's 200 levels to get through, so now you have even more excuses to sit in the bathroom for hours at a time avoiding your family slash roommates. It's all free to play, so just head on over to the app store. Links are down below, of course, and just download and start playing right now. Come on. This last summer, I decided to take a look at a bunch of Disney Channel and Nickelodeon shows that a lot of you have been very politely asking me to do since this whole YouTube thing even started. And one show that's been coming up over and over again since like way back when is the 2009 Nickelodeon classic, Big Time Rush. As with pretty much every other show from this time, I've never heard of it and don't know anything about it, but a lot of you have been asking, nay, begging. So I figured I might as well have a look. Opportunities like this come once in a lifetime. And when they do, you gotta grab it and turn that thing big time. Turn it, and I predict a 90% chance of bodily harm, and I'm talking about us, not them. I had my pop star dream again last night. This time I was wearing my lucky white v-neck, and I sang a Smokey Robinson song. Tracks of my tears. You ever just want to punch someone in the face? Anyway, these are our four main characters, who I guess Nickelodeon just kind of found at like any Hollister store. All the same, later on we see them sitting around watching some pussycat dolls, you know, dude stuff, when suddenly something comes on the TV that may or may not change their lives forever. Do you want to be a pop star? Yes! Well, today's your chance if you're in Minnesota. Are you ready? I'm in Minnesota. <laughs> That's Ginny Tinkler from Homeroom. Gustavo Rock, 90s mega producer of bands like Boy Quake, Boys in the Attic, and Boys City. And of course, who could forget the old classic bands like Boys in My Bathtub, Boys in the Freezer, and Boys in like fourth grade with those weird teeth growing out of the tops of their gums? So what we learn is that right here in Minnesota, of all places, there's gonna be an audition to find the next big pop star, and so naturally our four dudes rush over as fast as they can. While they're on their way, we get the usual montage of what you can expect from what the Midwest has to offer. Next! Um Next! I love life more than anyone. Do 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 do. Get off the stage! <laughs> okay, all right, that was pretty funny. You got me with that one. Anyway, so the guys make it just in time with one minute to spare and sign up to change their lives forever. Get it? Yes! <laughs> I told you. <laughs> Hey, Jenny. She's evil! I'm a star! A star! I want to be famous too! Whoa, whoa! <laughs> you know, just like every other show from around this time, this is pretty hard to watch when you're not like 12. I mean, it's really just a bunch of guys with cool hair yelling at each other, and like every joke is just who can yell the loudest. It's like a whole show written by YouTubers. So they all audition, and everyone just kind of sucks pretty much, until we get to James, the guy who really wants you to know that he can kind of sort of like sing a little bit. 8-12. 8 12's up. James, this is your dream, not mine. Now remember, opportunities like this come once in a lifetime. So hey, if you mess it up, your entire life is over and you'll be stuck here working at a gas station forever. Anyway, good luck. So James goes up there on stage and gives them the old high school theater kid who played the lead in Music Man once and now thinks he's hot stuff, rigmarole. People say I'm the life of the party because I tell a joke or two. Not bad. Oh, sorry, I got a, a little nervous there. Can I start over? Yeah, 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 start over. Why don't you uh, go outside and then just don't come back in. Okay, because you have no talent! You know, this guy sounds just like my dad when I gave him the paper mache owl I made in fourth grade for Father's Day. But all the same, this guy, whose name is Kendall apparently, gets so mad at this producer guy for being mean to his friend that he jumps up on the table and starts singing at him, which is a very normal response to the current situation. And then everyone gets upset and goes home after they just kind of like beat the crap out of everyone else there. But later that night, the music producer guy shows up at their house and has a little proposal for them. I want to take your family to Los Angeles and produce some demo tracks with Kendall. You can't be serious. It'll take three months. We'll take care of all of your expenses. Kendall, you have a gift. You have the fire. You also have anger management issues. And you have like 750 hours in Animal Crossing at this point, so clearly your life is going nowhere. But then Kendall's like, nah, because he wants to play hockey. So the next day we see our 20 year old, 15 year old main character standing outside a supermarket rolling shopping carts into parked cars. So I uh, did the math last night in this whole singing thing and you're an idiot. <clears throat> 
which I totally get as a former Midwestern kid myself, because let me tell you right now, okay, in this part of the country, there is nothing to do. After this, they all get to talking about how Kendall should totally take the opportunity, because hey, it's just three months after all, and it's all expenses paid, he goes to LA, records some demo tapes, and I mean, who knows, he might get rich and famous, develop a substance abuse problem, and then end up on a TLC reality show to pay off his credit card debt. The American dream. So he calls up the producer guy again and gives him his final answer. Well? Okay. I'll go to LA with you and record some demos. If you take my buds and make us a singing group. <laughs> yeah, okay, Kendall, it's 2009, all right? Boy bands are never gonna sell. I mean, come on, can you imagine millions of young teenage girls being obsessed over a group of singing, dancing pretty boys? <laughs> Hilarious. And so, long story short, the producer ends up agreeing, and they all fly out to LA so they can become famous. They get there and check into their new ritzy hotel where all the up-and-coming actors slash singers slash garbage pail kids hang out, and just as they're getting a taste of their new LA life, Kendall has something to say. I'm so in love. Okay. Reality check. We have to promise ourselves now that we're not gonna let this singing thing or this town change us. We are four hockey players from Minnesota. And we can never forget that. Do we all agree? Yes. yes. Yeah, you know, I remember back when my YouTube channel took off and I promised myself I wouldn't let the fame get to me. And now here I am, divorced, anxiety at an all-time high, my old friends won't talk to me anymore, and last week I washed a pair of pants with a cookie still in the pocket. So, you know, things are pretty alright. Anyway, later on, our merry band of Abercrombie rejects goes up to see the producer guy, and that's when we find out some very important information. Okay! So, you guys ready to be stars? Yeah! yeah. Good. Then prove to me you can be stars. We have three days to prove to this record company that there's something anything here. Well, three days? What happened to three months? Uh, the CEO of all of our butts wants to see you guys on Friday. The rest of the episode is just a bunch of ups and downs of Midwestern boys being Midwestern boys in LA. You know, they're getting like sidetracked by swimming pools and palm trees and pretty girls. They keep messing around and ruining everything and it's starting to look like this was all for nothing. But then Kendall gives us one of those good old Goonie speeches, you know, where he's like, hey guys, maybe we should like not be dumb or whatever. And then everyone's like, yeah. I really think we should do this. How? We got fired, remember? We didn't get fired. We are hockey players. Brothers of the ice and we do not quit. But I've realized three things since we got here. One, I love singing. Two, I love singing with you guys. And three, if I hold in a fart for long enough, it just kind of disappears. But like, where does it go? So what's the play? Dump the puck or big time rush? Ah, oh, that's the name of the show. <laughs> I get it. Anyway, so in the end, they record the demo and dance for the CEO of the record label, and he's all like, and then the show goes on for four seasons. So basically, this show slash group is kind of like Nickelodeon's answer to the Jonas Brothers? Or I guess it's more like the Monkees from back in the 60s, you know, who started off as like a band and a TV show at the same time? The show was pretty popular, lasting much longer than Jonas did, and got a whole bunch of nominations for like awards and stuff. But then in 2014, the group disbanded, and the dream was over. Sad trombone. So I think this concludes almost all the major Nickelodeon shows. I mean, I know there's like a bunch more recent ones, but like as far as like the the big ones from the golden age of whatever, you know, from like 2004 to 2012, 13-ish, give or take, like I believe I've done all of them now. Um, big Time Rush was one that people have been asking for for a long time, and I put it off for reasons I don't really know why, actually. Uh, but here it is. Finally did it. Y'all can, <laughs> can stop asking me for it. Finally did it. The show itself, I think, is interesting in just how it's, it's really just kind of your run of the mill like average nobodies get a chance at fame but but it's like almost every other show around this time the main characters are always like girls and it's always like a girl and her best friend and they're like do it right you got like you know i mean you got like hannah montana you got victorious you got zoe 101 you got iCarly. It's like so many shows about like girls sort of becoming famous or becoming something right looking at this show is kind of interesting because like the whole point of the show the whole premise of the show is like watching cute boys act goofy you know what i mean like that like that's like the whole the whole premise of the show is that i mean like i can i understand the appeal but i get it you know like it's like i said in the video it's hard to watch when you're not a 12 year old girl you know back in the 60s there was the monkeys who were they were like a tv producer guy came up and he was like hey let's make a, a band that's also a tv show and let's produce them that way and then now you know what 50 years later <laughs> or whatever it is they did the same exact thing with big time rush so it's, just, it's interesting how things come back into fashion or whatever anyway hope you enjoyed the video don't forget to subscribe 
subscribe. Don't forget to ring that bell so you don't miss any videos from me. I have a new podcast out. It's called Doing the Devil's Tango. It's all about like dating advice, dating stories, that type of thing. If you're interested in that, check out the link below. And above all else, everybody have a great day and I'll see you all next time.